Darts Federation in association with Winmore. This is the 2023 CT1 WDF Lakeside World Championship Men's Final. This is the home of World Darts. This is Lakeside! We welcome to the stage the former Catalonia Open and Slovak Open champion from the Netherlands, the countryman, Chris Landman! <laughs> days ago Scott Marsh and Sebastian Biewetsky kicked off this fantastic 2023 Lakeside WDF World Championship we have had many thrills and spills in the intervening period and 73 games later we have reached our showpiece event Andy Barton's the number one ranked men's player in the WDF has shown exactly why it has been pure darting consistency from the man from Belgium. Biewetsky was dispatched in the last 32. He then made fairly light work of Scotsman Gary Stone in the last 16. Johnny Tata made things tricky in the quarterfinals before he came through. And then he de defeated Dennis Nilsson 5-2 in the semi-finals with a brilliant three-set burst. Chris Landman, in some respects, is a bit of a surprise finalist. Didn't play his best darts against Davy Kerwin and Thomas Youngens, but in the quarters and semis, he dispatched a couple of previous Lakeside champions, the defending winner, Neil Duff, in the quarters, and the semi-finalist, Jelle Klaassen, who won in 2006. Andy Bartons arrives here as the number one. And just starting with him, Scott, he's been the dominant force in the WDF this year. He's won eight titles. He's miles in front in the ranking system. But that injects added pressure into him because if he loses this final, this is what's going to be remembered. 100. Yeah, I, t I totally agree. And, and if you have such an amazing season, you know, he came in as favourite. The rest of the players know what a great season he's had. And it's something that if he doesn't complete the job today, he, he, will, he will rue the opportunity. But once again, all those titles and awards on paper, we play on a dartboard, and this is a totally different game. 123. And already the Belgian is in a good position to break the Landman throw. He's in a much better position now. Landman with the advantage of winning the ball in the back room. 
Barton straight at double 19. And talk about making a charge early on. Talk about laying down a marker. Yeah, nice clean double 19. First dart. That's exactly what you need to settle you down. 140. But in these longer, longer games, you all have, you have purple patches as players and you're going to be playing well at some point. You'll be playing unbelievable and be taking legs and sets. And then you'll dip off and your opponent will take them. There's always a bit of to and fro in these longer games. It's making sure that you're throwing more than you're, you're dipping. That's the main thing. One thing I do know about Andy Barton's the reason he's number one is because... If you give him chances and you drop off and you miss chances, he will sweep them up. 2023 has been his year, and the confidence is sky high. 99. In terms of raw numbers, he's been, by and large, a long way the best player in the field. Three averages of 94 and one of 93. And if he carries on in that vein, Chris Lambert will have to have the performance of a lifetime. Double five. Early double trouble for the Dutchman. No such thing for Andy Barton's. The first to six sets here. It could be a marathon match. Landman could become the fourth Dutchman to win this title after Raymond van Barneveld, Jelle Klaassen and Christian Kist. Completely new territory for Belgium. They're a darting nation on the up. And if Barton's wins here, the interest will just skyrocket. 180. Lovely reply from Landman. Straight back at him there. It's Landman's darts. Surely not. Three on the bounce. 180. The crowd truly getting into this now, loving the big scoring. 49, and Uruguaya 81. For a first set win, three straight legs. Bartons wants the bit in the middle. 56, Chris Uruguaya 82. Second time in the match already, he's dipped very low at that bullseye. I would have gone treble 14 in that situation. Hit the big 14 and get yourself a dart of the ball. Minimum requirement. Bartons, that's his preferred route for 25. He usually polishes it up. And that's all about habit, that is, when you go in that route. And even though we're playing in the pressure cooker environment of a final, 25, no problem at all for Bartons. It's quite interesting, really, looking at the head-to-head -head record because these two have played on different circuits by and large this year. Andy is completely focused on the WDF. He wants this world title. Chris Landman has largely played PDC stuff. He played at Minehead in the Players' Championship Finals at the back end of last month. He's played some top-quality arrows this year. As a result, only one previous meeting, quarter-final of the Helvetia Open last year, and Andy Barton's won that 4-3. 95. <laughs> 27. And Lerman cannot afford visits like that. Otherwise, Bartons will be into the sunset. 100. 
137. That's better from Lambman. One hundred. Pressure of power, one hundred and forty two. One hundred. And you require fifty one. A little pressure asserted to the 51, tops the preferred route, and that is why. It's just a hold of throw at the moment. He's been good on all his doubles this week, but he has been particularly devastating on tops. Just going through the numbers before the game, and Andy's before tonight, hit 44% of his doubles in the whole tournament. And the reason why he can maintain those high averages, it's not just because of his brilliant scoring, but he doesn't waste too many chances. No, he doesn't. Going back to the point, if Lamman keeps missing like he did earlier at tops, he will mop those up all day long, Will Bartons. 96. Don't forget, back in that Duff game, Duff had four match darts at Lamman. He dodged a bullet in that game. 60. Classen was 3-1 up, but didn't get a dart to win the match because Lamman reeled off four of the most spectacular sets and there was one that wasn't spectacular where Yella Klaassen could have actually gone 4-2 up and that was the big turning point in the match it was a scrappy old leg and it got Lamman back to 3-3 and then he put the hammer down and won his semi-final 5-3. 60. Yeah, he's shown some real stones to get through to this stage of the competition because the performances against David Kerwin and Thomas Youngens weren't great by any means, but he managed to get the job done. And then, as you mentioned, survived four match darts against last year's champion, Neil Duff. And that burst of four sets against Yella Klaassen was probably one of the, the best mini sessions of play we've seen all week. Yeah, certainly was. Charge the second man, Andy Barton. Barton's going through here unchallenged at the minute. Lama will want it to be get close. I know it's on the Barton's throw this set, but he is taking full advantage One. of it. Even watching him on the walk-on, he looked entirely focused. Didn't necessarily want to engage with, with too many fans. He wasn't ignoring them, he was still high-fiving, but you could tell his mind was solely on this game. The biggest game of his life. Let me just tell you, having that little star on your shirt does change your life. Not going to let it change it for a bad thing. You've got to let it change it for what it is. And you require 120. The six straight legs and a two set lead. Almost perfect from Andy Barton. He has yet to miss a beat. That is three straight legs taken on his favourite tops. And Chris Lambin has been caught in a Barton's whirlwind. He gives the camera a bit of a knowing nod there. Barton's is on absolute fire. And he leads the countryman by two sets to nil. This program is brought to you by Benji Marine Engine Repair and Trading. Specialized in Watsila engines with a 24 hour a day high quality worldwide service. And by Hemeco Storage Systems, your one stop storage system solution with over 100 years of experience. The 45th annual Winmore Fleetwood Memorial Las Vegas Open will be held from January 19th till the 21st. Sin City welcomes you to come and play in the entertainment capital of the world.
Both men's and women's champions will win places at the 2024 WDF World Championships. The Romanian Darts Festival is from January the 26th till January the 28th. Come join the party in Bucharest. Register to play by Wednesday the 24th of January. The Toto Dutch Open Darts is held from February 1st till February 4th. Registration is open until January the 16th. The Toto Dutch Open Darts is by far the largest darts party in the world that you should not miss. And the men's and women's champions go to the lakeside in December 2024. The Swiss Open and Helvetia Open tournaments are held from May 31st till June the 2nd. One of the longest running tournaments in Europe invites you to join them in the most beautiful surroundings you'll find in Europe. The Swedish Open and Masters is held from August 16th till 18th. A popular tournament for many of Europe's best aerosmiths. For more information on each of these tournaments, go to the link in the description. Welcome back to the final of the 2023 WDF Men's World Championship here at Lakeside, where we just witnessed a Barton's Blitz, a Barton's bulldozing of Chris Landman. Landman has had the powers of recovery on many occasions in this tournament, but does he have it in him to overcome this brilliant performance from the number one seed? These next few legs, absolutely vital for the 42-year-old from the Netherlands. And it was so notable that Andy Bartons went off for about 30 seconds, then came back on, and he was throwing dart after dart after dart. He is tunnel visioned on the dartboard right now. No, it's a funny thing to go back in the back room oh, during the final. Um, people will look at you, people won't approach you generally, but you can feel the air attention in the back room. Uh, generally, when, when I was in the final, I went in the back room, um, had a comfort break, never took my darts with me. I didn't want to throw on a different board. Uh, my son was in the back room with me. Uh, Richie George was actually in the back room with me on that occasion, and he's here tonight, funny enough. Uh, but yeah, and, and I just had a chat with him, and we talked about what was going on, and then I came back out. And that was the way we did it. But Andy doesn't, uh, if you're two sets up, I suppose you don't want a break. You don't want to be back in the room with anything, taking your mind off of what you've just achieved and what you've done. It's sort of like if it's American football game, we're in the first quarter, over and done with him. And he's ahead. He has the biggest checkout of the week. He could break his own record. 119. Chris should have by 56. Chris has got to polish these off. And that's exactly what he didn't do. He had a couple of chances in the first two sets and didn't manage to get Barton's on the back foot by hitting them. So that's something that he'll be happy with that he's opened up. As I mentioned in the first set, going through Barton's numbers, 44% on the doubles. Remarkable, really, that Chris has got to the final by missing over 100 darts at double, 54 out of 163 for the tournament. So it was important for him when cleaning up that 56 that there was no messing about. There have been too many times where we've seen him have three darts at a double in hand and he's not taken them. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a county manager that keeps telling me sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And in darts, you need a bit of luck to win anything big. You need a bit of luck. And Lamb is now here and he's got to turn that luck into positivity and get his game out there. This is the world final. You do not want him to be leaving having played your B game. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. If you put your best game out there and your opponent beats you, you just shake him by the hand and go, it was your 65. day. Chris, by 140. Chris, 
For a lot of other players, 135 would be a big ask. But for Andy Bartons, it still is too big an ask. So 14, double 11. But it's not like he's missing by minute bits there. He missed by a country mile. And it invites Barton to come back in and take it. Hold of throw for Andy Barton's. 140. Chris has definitely lifted his game since the break. There's no two ways about that. 140. But Bartons is going with him. 140. Belgium's most famous darts fan, Jackie. Authority from Chris Lambin. A 12 darter landed on the bullseye. 59. Just reminding Bartons that he's in a game. He may have started quickly. It's all about how you finish. 60. Just ask Yella Klassen. It was a properly crazy game of darts last night. One seven four called by our referee Garin Roderick in his second year here at Lakeside, and he's been given the chance to referee the first half of the final in a super edition. Ninety-eight. And I'll thank him for his company in the comms box for games this week. Sixty and the one hundred and seventy. Could it? Oh. Finally, the 170 is gone. If any one player was going to do that, of course it was going to be Andy Bartons. Yeah, absolutely. 100. Absolutely. Just when you think Lamman's getting back into the game, that is going to give him a big lift at the end of this set. 100. Back to back 12 darters. One from Chris, one from Andy. 95. Said their poop pace would suit each other. That's exactly what's happening here. One six seven numerically smaller, but more difficult because of the switching. This is frightening. This is frightening. One hundred and forty-two. This year, five hundred and forty-one. Seventeen it will be. Double four he will aim at first. Double two he's polished off. And continues to do. That one seventy at the end of leg four in set three. Massive turning point in the game. And went. 100. Change the momentum totally from Landman to Bartons. 100. Highest average of the tournament has been 
97.4 from Dennis Nilsson against Wesley Plosier in the quarterfinals. The way Bartons is going, he's not just going to beat that, he's going to annihilate it. 140. Averaging 101 right now. And doesn't seem to be easing up any. 140. Thus, thus far, a masterful performance from the world number one. Well, he's that confident. He doesn't feel like he needs to leave a dart at the ball last in hand. It's what Chris Landman needs. 96. And you require 36. Wow. Mm. Double eight. Game shot to the first set. Chris Lambert. Finally, Bartons misses a chance. Seven and Lambert sneaks one Chris off of him. Demar. To break a throw. 100. And the longer Chris Lambert goes without winning a set, the less he'll believe he can would. 45. Wesley plays here enjoying himself. 136. But he wishes he could be on the stage right now. The only way that would have been possible would have been for him to get past Dennis Nilsson and then Bartons. Good luck with that. He looks to be having a good time where he is. Little Dicky. Sat in the crowd enjoying the World Championships. He always does. 81. So once again, after sneaking a leg, he hands Bartons a chance to get it straight back. 46. Bartons does not convert. Jackie rubbing his head there. He will be if this double 10 goes in. Ten. And once again, double ten. trouble curses the countrymen. No score. Who's going to fire 10? What's happening here? In charge of the second half. Lamb and double, Lamb. that's what's happening here. Two legs. It's only the throw first. He won. Two legs up in set four. 100. You'd have seen in the walk on that Chris Landman has got his, his wife and his, his kids with him here. The lakeside. Yeah, his wife's Clarissa. Saw her pop up earlier on one of the camera shots. 93. 100. First to six sets. We will get breaks after the fourth, sixth, and eighth set if we get that far. 
And then sets 9, 10, and 11, if required, will go straight to the end. But he's back in this set. When you keep polishing those off, it just puts that doubt in your opponent's mind when he gets down round those 50 to 80 shot outs if you're around the ton. And again, it's giving Barton's a lift on the Lamman throat. Lamman was looking with all intents and purposes of taking that last leg and in position, but the 108 from Barton's gives another momentum swing. 100. Good response, though, from Landman. Sixty. Press unit by 121. 105. Nice setup from Landman. He'll be coming back for double eight for the set. Sixty. Press unit by 16. Chance he must take. A chance he does take. Chris Landman is on the board. Andy Bartons was threatening to whitewash him in sets, but Landman is made of tougher stuff than that, as we have seen on several occasions this week. He'll now believe a little bit more that he can go on and become world champion. Andy Bartons is still in command, but Chris Landman is behind him. It is Bartons three, Landman one. This programme is brought to you by Benji Marine Engine Repair and Trading. Specialised in Watsila engines with a 24 hour a day high quality worldwide service. And by Hemeco Storage Systems, your one stop storage system solution with over 100 years of experience. The 45th annual Winmore Fleetwood Memorial Las Vegas Open will be held from January 19th till the 21st. Sin City welcomes you to come and play in the entertainment capital of the world. Both men's and women's champions will win places at the 2024 WDF World Championships. The Romanian Darts Festival is from January the 26th till January the 28th. Come join the party in Bucharest. Register to play by Wednesday the 24th of January. The Toto Dutch Open Dart is held from February 1st till February 4th. Registration is open until January the 16th. The Toto Dutch Open Dart is by far the largest darts party in the world that you should not miss. And the men's and women's champions go to the lakeside in December 2024. The Swiss Open and Helvetia Open tournaments are held from May 31st till June the 2nd. One of the longest running tournaments in Europe invites you to join them in the most beautiful surroundings you'll find in Europe. The Swedish Open and Masters is held from August 16th till 18th. A popular tournament for many of Europe's best aerosmiths. For more information on each of these tournaments, go to the link in the description. A special thank you to our tournament sponsors, Winmore, ANG Travel Group, iDarts, Dart Connect, CT1 and Quiff. Andy Barton's still in command. But Chris Landman is able to exploit one or two weak visits from the brilliant Belgian. It was a good set from the countryman to win going into the break. Barton's with a bit of extra thinking to do now. Landman will hope to carry the form from set four into this 
two-set session. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We've had a changeover of referee. And for the Come final on. time on the lakeside stage, we welcome Charlie Corstaphine, who is leaving for Pastures New. 140. A top bloke who will be sorely missed from this stage. And a top referee as well. 59. Chris Lambin, at very few points of this tournament, has shown his A-game. Go back to that first of four sets that saw him recover from 3-1 down to beat Yella Clarsen. But in none of his four matches, he's averaged above 90, whereas Andy Barton's lowest average has been 93. Barton's just has that extra gear. Well, it's like an overdrive, isn't it? It's an extra gear that it just he just cruises along. He does drop off on occasions. All dark players do, but when he does drop off over this long distance, you've got to be on top of him. One hundred, and you require one hundred and sixty. Already, Barton's is threatening a break of throw. Needs treble 20. But that last score of 100 from Landman made him not hit that treble 20. So now he's got to take this. Game shot on the first leg. Chris Landman. He has to crawl his, claw his way back into this game. Slowly but surely, whether it's make, taking mistakes from Andy or whether having to blow him away with scoring. took your very oh, wise advice, Scott. 140. We've all been there, mate. That's what it is. We've all been there. Just watching this final, are you getting flashbacks and reminiscing about yours? Being yeah, in the course. same room as one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. A final I was in two to throw between Adams and I and there were a few big moments and I managed to win one more of them than he did and that's how tight the margins can be we were both I think I had a 93 average in that one Andy Barton has an 11 data and that's around the mark you've got to be in these finals to win them you have to stand up there and tell yourself special moments, special people. And get yourself through those moments. 55. From Barton's point of view, this week has not just been about obviously winning, but essentially justifying the hype. Proving why so many people are talking about him. Absolutely, and the fact that, that he's the number one and he's taken all that pressure all week. You know, he doesn't have an interview without being mentioned that he's the number one. It starts to grate a little bit at times, I can tell you. 97. But once it's gone, you wish you were at number one all week, all the time. Being number one in the rankings is the most amazing feeling. And you require 170. Being number one in the rankings and world champion is an even better feeling. 60. Chris require 155. Wants a treble 19. 139. And you require 110. Probably the worst dart Andy Barton's has thrown 70. all week. Worst two darts. 14. Once again, Andy required 14. errors from Landman. Game shot the third line. Andy Barton. Errors that have been characteristically punished. Go on. He's in the background there, shaking his head. He can't believe it. Nineteen. 
99. Landman is one of the more honest players about his game. He doesn't need talent, he knows. And when he comes off, he doesn't ever blame another player. He doesn't ever get upset. He just knows that he hasn't done it or he has done it. One hundred. Eighty-one. One hundred and thirty-eight. Lovely setup from Barton's. One hundred. Once again, it's that clear-headed thinking. Correct board management. Eighty-three. One hundred. And you require eighty-one. There's Andy's very nervous-looking girlfriend, Steph. She'd be less nervous if she if he takes out this bullseye to go four one up. Fifty-six. Christian Big ask from Landman to take the 160 to stay in the set. 140. Pressures the and 25 of Bartons. Bartons goes 17. Double four. Double two. Game shot the fifth set. Andy Barton. He's been so good at those because he's had he's had several opportunities at the bullseye. Apart from the 170, all of them have gone wide of the mark, but 25 is one of those shots that players practice religiously because they know they're going to be left on it on a number of occasions. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I still prefer the nine route because it gives you a good go at double eight and still get a go at double four. Whereas the 17's route, if you miss the double four, you're back down to double two. It's not a double that you're always throwing at. Well, you like not to be thrown at it very often, I can tell you. Because something's gone drastically wrong with three or six darts before you if you get heading down to double two. Although in defensive Bartons, that's three legs now, he's one on double two. Oh, you don't mind if you're winning them like it, that's for sure. 40. He's given Landman chances, but they're like 164, 167. 142. And he requires 24. Not far away. But these break your heart when they go. 18. Not to Christian be this time. 25. And once again, and he requires six. Manman wrist reads his script. Madhouse. No score. Chris I must four. admit, I thought he was going to split that because he's been so good on double two. He's convinced he'd go and two for double two. And then Lambman thinks, Lamman. I'll have a go at that myself. Second leg, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. Be annoying for Andy because it shouldn't go unnoticed that winning that fifth set was a, a break of throw. Going first in this sixth set. One hundred and thirty-five. One hundred. Good recovery from Barton's there. Andy finding himself in the fives. 140. 
win here for the Belgian would mean masses to Belgian darts. There's no two ways about it. They have their superstars out there. 65. Dimitri van der Berg and Kim Hybrix. This would be... This would be some win and boost to darts in Belgium. Shows Barton was right to go for the full 180 and leave double nine. Game shot the second line. Andy Barton. He's getting most things right. Further, it's time to throw first. Game on. Because it's an unusual number to leave on purpose. Ladman may have looked at it and thought, oh, all right. Maybe get a, a little bit distracted. 100. Call it the old dead cat shot. Absolutely. 100. Should go to the 18s. She's just to say. 171. Tidy, what do I know? Tidy, tidy. If you've got 16. two in there, just want to put three in there, Dan. Martin's knew he didn't have to go the 18 route for that. 130. And you require 68. Double four. 60. Chris so requires 50. When you fall one up in sets, those usually just drop in. So a chance for Landman. 32. And a cha another chance goes begging. And you require eight. Game shot the third line. Andy Barton. And once again, Andy Barton's tied. He's up. It's Chris to throw first. Game on. The start of the game spoke about Andy Barton's proclivity 21. with tops. But I'll tell you something, throughout the duration of this tournament, he's been brilliant on double four and double two. Those small, awkward numbers that some players will go to lengths to avoid. He's snatched them. And they're under his grasp. A lot of head shaking going on there from Lamont. Mary and Teresa enjoying their night at the Arras. 43. Absolutely. Lamont now starting to panic. Really chastising himself. He knows that was a chance to get back in this leg. 100. Barton's just turned the throw around on him. He's going to need a double treble visit here to try and get it back. 60. And then you're having a bit of luck there. That one didn't even go in. It's all starting to weigh down on Lamman's shoulders. 60. Well, the bounce out in the first visit, I think, has set the tone for this leg. 60. 18 darts and, and not a finish. 37. Barton's could be close to finishing off Landman. He wants double ten. One hundred and seventeen. Ah. 
59. And he required 20. Double 10 coming in then. Game shot on the six there. Andy Barton. Set number six goes Barton's way. Andy Barton has won nearly 10 titles in the WDF this year. The biggest one coming in Australia, winning the Open against Neil Duff. He was the runner-up in the Dutch Open, losing out to Barry Van Peer. Disappointment there. He has not let that affect him for the entirety of 2023 as a calendar year. The winning machine looks like he is rolling on, still unbeaten since the end of September. And Chris Lambert, unless he manages somehow to win five consecutive sets, will be the latest victim in the Barton's onslaught. Charlie Costafine so is about to call Chris game on. First, Chris Lambert has the throw. There is now no more margin for error for the Dutchman. He has to be no perfect from now on. He has to find the form that so him beat Klaassen last night and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, all that and more, I would suggest. 135. Uh, and he's been so solid. You, you can't see Chris getting five sets before Andy gets one. And that's the honest, the honest answer to this, really. And you now, you now start to think and question, did Lambert have two finals already? One against Neil Duff and one against Yella Klaassen. So you could say he's come through too many finals already. Has that taken it out of him? I also feel there's an advantage here when you play the semi-final in the afternoon and not the evening. I think you've got more downtime in the afternoon, more time to let the adrenaline drop down so you get a normal night's sleep. Ravis, it's late in the evening. The adrenaline's still pumping for two hours after the game. Double 13. He chose to stay on the treble 20 and he was vindicated. It is another major, massive Seven, checkout for Andy Barton. He knew he was only going to get one dart at it. The chances are Lama would take the 60 is how you'd approach that mentally. And he then knew two darts at the treble for one dart at the double. Doesn't matter what double it was. It's Andy's partner there. Still worried. 5-1 up. Well, Andy Bartons is playing like a man. He's got a 6 a.m. flight to Belgium. He's got to get to the airport. He's got to pack his suitcase when he gets home. He's in a hurry. To be fair, he's always in a hurry, mate, to be honest. Especially when he puts his foot to that hockey. But he's showed a, a controlled hurriedness this week. Yeah, that's, that, that is a good way of putting it because sometimes Lambert is so much in a hurry, he becomes erratic, but there's, there's never really been any erratic spells well, from Barton. No, I'm a firm believer when it's your time, it's your time, and, 95. and you you'd be a brave man to bet against it. It's Andy's time this year. 47. Can he sneak it underneath? And yes, he can. And now Andy Bartons is one leg away from the ultimate prize. Christopher first, come on. One hundred and twenty-three. One hundred. 
When you're in this situation and you're just one leg away in your head, you're just trying to hold it all together. Your family are around you. You're, you can see them just biting their nails and being nervous and you try to avoid that eye contact. You try and keep the game as normal as possible in your head. It could happen now. And leave 16 for tops. All about believing in the moment. It's all about believing in the moment. You dreamed of this moment. You've dreamed of this moment all your life. Now you're at that point. Andy requires 40. Andy Bartons requires tops. Andy Bartons has won the right to call himself the first ever Belgian champion. He has been the best player this week. He has been the most consistent player this week. He has proven why he is the number one man. Belgian darts has been booming for some time. It is going to skyrocket to another level now. The absolutely brilliant Andy Bartons is your 2023 Lakeside World Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, a massive round of applause for our finalist as he leaves the stage, Chris Wanda! We now move straight into our presentation and we welcome to the stage Teresa Franklin and Joanne Potter, the daughters of the late, great Bob Potter, O.B.E. <laughs> Receiving £50,000, the magnificent Champions Trophy and the title of CT1 WDF Lakeside Men's World Champion, the Beast from the East, Andy Bartons! Andy Bartons, congratulations. We saw you celebrating on the floor, world number one, and now a world champion to match. Can you put into words what it feels like to finally achieve the dream? Yeah, I dream a long time for this. Now I'm standing here, now I'm world champion. I'm happy. Tonight, you were simply on fire. We saw glimpses of genius from you. How did you do it? How did you find such flow when it mattered the most? Yeah, lots of training. I trained three, four months, three, four hours per day. And now this performance, I'm very happy. What a sensational year you've had overall. Talk to me about the self-belief you have. You haven't been beaten since September. Yeah, I have a lot of confidence. So they must put a good performance to beat me. So. I'm the world champion now. Maybe we can better to today, tomorrow, we will see. Okay. You did deserve it. What a thing for you and for Belgium as well. Before we leave, a credit to your opponent. He took down two former world champions, but he couldn't take down the world number one. A credit to his performance though. Yeah, of course. Chris is also a very good player. He took a final at the PDC Pro Tour, so he's all very good. Congratulations, Andy. Take this back to Belgium. Belgium's first ever world champion. Thank you very much.